What's up, Chris? What's up, dude? Not much, man. Well, actually, a lot. What's up? This Dusenberg is what's up. Oh, first of all, welcome to the local pickup. Welcome to the local pickup. I'm Jason Broadwater. I'm Chris Reve. We're about to tell you what's up, and this is a Dusenberg. It's a German guitar. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and listen. This guitar is awesome. Dudesenberg. Dudesenberg is what it is. <laughs> yes. So this is a German guitar. Dudesenberg was uh, founded in the 90s. And a guy made, started making it out of his house and made a Star Player, which this is a Star Player TV Custom. Star Player, as far as I understand, uh, only has two pickups. And um, the front one's a P90 and the back one's a humbucker. This is three pickups. Um, the settings are for uh, this one, this one, or both, and then there's a knob that blends in this middle pickup. Like, no matter how you're set, you can blend in how much middle pickup you want. Sorcery. It is sorcery. These are three humbuckers, and they're called uh, D-Tron. <laughs> nice. Which is like the whole, D I mean, there's so many Ds on this guitar. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. Um, There's more D's on this guitar than I think I was really prepared for when I came in here today. <laughs> um, you can blend in this middle pickup with a knob here, and you've got... Uh, First of all, i got to point out, this guitar is so rad that when you talk about it, you can only... This is how you point to stuff. <laughs> this is the official way to tell us about things on this guitar, like to devil horn it. Yeah, I mean, it's so cool. It's like a, It's got a 50s deco design on everything, and everything yeah. that's metal on it is um, stepped, like mm -hmm. 50s architecture. Yeah. Like even the, the caps on the knobs. Yes, yeah. the cap on the knob, it's a little bit of a um, Devo hat. It is like a Devo yeah. hat. And then like look up here, the steps, the uh, even on the um, tuning pad. Yeah, there's a consistent, that's one of the, you know, I'm not uh, the world's foremost uh, instrument expert. Now wait a minute, uh, you're not. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I should have said something about <laughs> Yeah, that. right, I realize that's but the your title. resume. Yeah. I know the title of the channel <laughs> says that, um, but, but I, I am a designer, uh, I'm a graphic designer, and I, that is immediately where my eye goes when I'm not, obviously when I'm not playing an instrument, and this one has tons of it's like- It's everywhere. There's all kinds of language, honestly, yeah. just in the design of this guitar, um, and it's, it's, it's a consistent. This guitar establishes design rules and it follows does. them, it's awesome. And like the amount, the sheer amount of screws in this guitar yeah. is um, Too, worthy of, of leather jacket with spikes all yeah. over it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just D's and screws all over this thing. <laughs> I mean, this thing is, <laughs> is Ready to rock, and we you know should I mean? say we should acknowledge that it's it's a, it's 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 base level. It's coming from the Les Paul. Oh yeah, zone. Right. But like I mean, it's got, got the F hole. Yeah, it's completely different. <laughs> Boy, just F holes, D's, just screwing all over this thing. I think the screwing probably did too far. I mean, so it is the you know single cutaway body that has the you know the Les Paul would be the most iconic kind of version of that. It's got the uh, semi-hollow body, which I think always adds to the sound. And um, it's got some great sounds, man. So like the bridge is totally something that I probably wouldn't use much myself, but I could see people doing it. But it's got that, um, that thin rock and roll kind of rockabilly. But um, I like it up on the bridge, man. real heavy with it on the bridge too so it's like and um this is a volume knob but you have this uh knob here where if you go one direction it fades in this middle pickup and 
And what else? Most kind that of. That sounds very good. Oh, I know. I don't know. <laughs> you're like, yeah. For yeah. some reason, that middle. I just really. There's a oh. texture there that's and, very unique. And check this out. When you're on the bridge and you fade in the middle pickup, it takes on like a strat twang, like. <laughs> Yeah, I would honestly say, I mean, a lot of guitars that that you talk about for their versatility or whatever, I mean, this one really has oh, a very dude, wide range yeah. of sounds it can get. I know, and I really like, um, I like it up here. And even here. And it's real chimey, too. So so I was going to say about these, uh, these pickups. So these are humbuckers, but they call them D-Tron. So like the filter tron pickups that would be on like a Gretsch or a um, Rickenbacker have that shimmery top end that that uh, that they're known, like Rickenbackers are known mm -hmm. for, that shimmery. Um, the the jangly. The jangly stuff. Um, humbuckers are more smooth and even all the way across. And then like single coil pickups that would be on like a Strat or a Telecaster have that twang, mm -hmm. that front pop. pop on the front of it, yeah. These are humbuckers that have some of that Filtertron shimmer, and they call them D-Trons. They're specific to, they designed them. And um, it gives you that shimmer up here at the high end. It gives you the shimmer way up at the high end, you know. Yeah, I definitely, this is, maybe the most versatile sounding guitar we've ever had. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. You know, you know, I would say Paul Reed Smith, that's a company that uh, I've never owned one. We've never had one on the show. Hopefully someday we will. I've always heard that about Paul Reed Smith. Maybe oh, yeah? we'll have to remember this to compete with it. You know, I've I, heard, I don't know anything about Paul Reed yeah, Smith Yeah, I've always all. heard the way this thing feels, It, it's what I hear when people talk about why they like Paul Reed Smith. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't but, know um, that. Yeah, this definitely has... I, we should compare it someday. We should get a PRS on here we one day. We should compare that. it. Or um, a Paul Reed Smith. Or a Paul Reed Smith, whatever you, whatever yeah. you prefer. Yeah. Um, but this is incredibly... So, again, even though I just listened to you say it... That's the that's neck. That's the neck, obviously. Yeah. And this is... The that's... These two, remember how you have to point like this? Yeah. These two, and then you can fade in the middle by going forward on that knob. Oh, wow, yeah. So if you go, if you go backwards from the midpoint, it's a regular tone knob. Uh -huh. So you're going to get deeper as you go back. If you go forward, it starts to pull in and blend in this middle pickup. So there are two different knobs in one knob, basically. Wow, yeah, so so yeah. this is your tone knob all the way down. Yeah. Midpoint, you feel it, there's a little notch in there, you feel it, that's your tone knob all the way up. Yeah. And then, leaving that there, it moves into bringing in the mid pickup bringing on in top the mid of pickup. that. Whichever selector you're on, so if you're just on neck, it brings in the mid. If you're on both, it brings in the mid. If you're wow. on bridge, it brings in the mid. Okay, that explains yeah. maybe then that versatility. <laughs> Dude, that's it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and the tremolo system is so smooth, dude. I'm not, like, I struggle to actually use a, a whammy bar in anything that I write. Like, I always think they're cool. Mm. They look cool. You, you, got, you sort of have to write around it. You kind of do. And, like, and I, I, I haven't been able to. And I don't have the surf thing going or whatever. But, so I don't have any good examples. But just to feel like... So smooth and easy. I mean, it's like really amazing. Versus like sometimes with the Bigsby, I feel like I'm kind of cranking, yeah. cranking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know That's I mean? a very sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you could kind of, you know. I don't even know how people do it. You, you, you try it. Well, I think there's two things. So I think with a tremolo arm, you have the traditional sort of you write something to, to include that like. Mm -hmm. 
right, yeah, right. Spaghetti Western. Right, right, right. Yeah, or, everything or, you write, Spaghetti Western. Or it's just a subtle, like... That's the thing. This one isn't, like, it's, it's so, so sensitive. Smooth, yeah. you, well, you can kind of play with that, like... But, you know, it's also cool. Is I'm sorry to interrupt, but, um, so there's a, you, there's two uh, screws on either side of this that an Allen wrench controls. Mm -hmm. And you loosen it, and then you angle this or oh. uh, slide it back. So you put it wherever you want it, and at what angle with the fretboard or with the strings you want it. You can have it real low, like right down beside you. It's really cool. So yeah, it, it probably is a good guitar to sort of ride it and kind of hold it while you're playing. Right. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool, dude. Yeah, this is a very unique guitar. I didn't, it's been around here for a little while, and I kind of picked it up and just sort of like, oh, it's a Les Paul. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> when I made that face, I was like, <laughs> um. <laughs> but it's it's definitely more than just a Les Paul knockoff for sure. Like oh, it, it's, it yeah. goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, it's no way a knockoff, dude. It's definitely no. its own even, thing. Honestly, even again back to the design, that I've never seen that where it's this sort of like Les Paul where you have the wing pit guard kind of flying off of there. But this is on the guitar, but it's it embodies the feeling of that whatever wing that's on a Les Paul. Absolutely, and it, and this is for no reason except just to add art to that kind of like. Yeah, that design yeah. ethics that are happening here that yeah. is, they establish, I guess that kind of establishes it because it catches, what's part of the logo actually? Yeah, it's everywhere, um, yeah. Oh yeah, so step, that's part of their logo. That yeah, so step, it's yeah. that the sort of design ethic is uh, introduced in the logo, and it follows it throughout, including yeah. the top of the headstock and the tuners. It said at first glance, I was like, oh, it's a, it's a Les Paul-y thing. Yeah, right. Um, it, it, that is definitely a starting point for it. No, it's, this is it's a very unique thing. guitar. So, like, uh, Duesenberg was was formed in the 90s by a guy that kind of started out of his house in Germany. And um, a lot of their guitars have um, pickup combinations. That seems to be what they're kind of into. So, like, I was looking at one they had that was like a, I'm going to butcher this, but I think it was a single coil up here on the, uh, the neck, and mm -hmm. then it had a... Uh, no, it was P90, single coil, and humbucker. It was like uh, everything, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you could have, and then there's like ones where it has the P90 and the humbucker, and that's it. So that whole kind of thing where you would kind of custom mix match vintage sounds with woods, and, and then you would design around all that, you know, that's their, their, their thing, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so they make a lot of interesting guitars, and they've become real famous. They've got signature um, artists like... Mike Campbell, you know, Tom Petty's mm -hmm. uh, uh, guitar player uh, and more, you know, has a signature Duesenberg. Um, Joe Walsh had a signature, signature Duesenberg. Um, and they've just become more and more popular. Well, that makes sense to me. I, yeah. I, I'd never heard of this before this showed up in here. And um, yeah, I'm surprised, especially picking up now and playing it. Yeah, it's very cool. Very yeah. cool. And it's just one of the most playable guitars in terms yeah. of like the it, neck and everything. It just feels great. It's sort of a, I don't know, it's just kind of like, and I realize it has this like gold, uh, which is, which feels like this sort of, uh, I don't know, lavish kind of thing that's on there or whatever. Yeah. But just the way this thing plays and the sound you can get out, out of it, it's it's kind of one of those, like if you're only going to own one electric guitar, right, right, this yeah. is a good choice. Yeah, you take it in a lot of directions for sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, anyway, so that's the Duesenberg um, Star Player TV Custom. See you next time on The Local Pickup.